Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. The patch of the week has just dropped. The new week is here, and I am here to bring everything to you guys. So I'm going to be going through the notices today. I'm going to be going through all the stuff has been coming out. We did get a new banner. It is not a character banner. It is a wish list banner. Now I'm going to go over that in a second when I get to it. I'm guessing we probably got some new stuff in the shop, so I'll do a shop review. We'll go check out the new Colosseum of the Chosen, which comes with three new towers, all with 30 floors each, which is pretty damn awesome. From what I've seen from the data mine, it does look like there are character noble memories being introduced. Now, we don't know exactly how that is going to come into play, uh, but we're going to check all that out here today. So that being said, let's go through this one thing at a time. So May 22nd, that is today. I'm just going to go through all these updates one at a time. All right, so the new battle tower, Colosseum of the Chosen, is here. We do have a new mechanic in the game. I'm super excited for this, guys. Uh, it is nice to get some new stuff. We just got a new battle ranking, which is fun, and then this as well. Plus, there's a live stream next week, which I'm guessing is going to be introducing the next crossover along with some critical first soldier information. Either way, it's a really exciting time for Ever Crisis right now. All right, so as of May 22nd, a new battle tower, Coliseum of the Chosen, has been added. The number of characters that can be added to a party is limited in this battle tower, clear to earn rewards such as blue crystals and character specific memories. Now, the new Battle Tower Coliseum of the Chosen Editions are going to be the Amber Tower, the Cerulean Tower, and the Emerald Tower. It does look like the Coliseum of the Cho Chosen is unlocked by clearing the Battle Tower, Sealed Tower of the Cetra, Midgar Falls, Floor B30. All right. That being said, let's go up. The very exciting level cap uh, increase has come it is not a five cap increase but a 10 cap increase and i'm guessing this is going to cost a boatload of memories so i hope you guys have been farming the premium quests for the memories for a while now i know that i have and i still don't think i have anywhere near enough to even max a single character all right so other than that uh the maximum level has been increased to 80 character stream unlocked character noble memories added okay so the question is, Is do, the no do you need the Noble Memories for just Limit Break boosts, or is it literally just for everything now? If it is for everything, I'm, on, uh, I'm gonna be a little bit bummed about that, I'm not gonna lie. So without, let's see where we are right here, we're on the character maximum level. So let's go over to the growth board and let's see exactly what we're getting ourselves into. So I'm here on Cloud, um, it says here, unlocked, oh, I'm on Matt right here. Okay, so I guess I can't actually see what is to come right here. Um, it does look like these are regular shards right, or regular memories right here. So I can't really go up above until we get someone past 77. Um, so it does look like regular memories are going to be the thing. And it doesn't look like we can actually see an increase to any of these limit breaks here. But I'm guessing that's what the Noble Memories are for, or for the Limit Breaks. Um, but I could be wrong, guys, so we'll just have to wait and see. I don't have that uh, built out yet, so we can't really check. But I'm sure some of you guys will be level 80 by the end of tonight. So we'll, we'll hear the rumors starting to flood in as soon as the, some of the quicker players get max level. All right. That being said, let's go down here. It does look like the event critical threat Gallum Balor Humus stage has been added. However, guys, I'm not seeing an icon here for a crash, um, which if there is no crash fight, that is going to be a bit of a bummer, right? High difficulty Gallum Balor Humus is here. Um, so it looks like new stages include, okay, there is a crash. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. I was gonna be bummed if there was no crash, honestly including a new ultra hit, ultra hard stage crash battle have been added to the ongoing critical threat Gallum Balor Humus. All right, so now is the time to start cranking out, uh, finishing these uh, different ticket, um, I don't know what you guys would call them, ticket, uh, event, draw, thingamajiggies. <laughs> 
But I, I normally go pretty easy on the bronze and the silver, and then when the gold one comes out, that's when I really start to crank down on grinding it out. It does look like Matt is coming with a new sword, the Hummus Rapier. No, I'm just kidding. Humus Rapier. Honestly, this sword, it looks so damn cool. This is like one of the coolest looking swords literally in the game. It's a free event weapon. I mean, just look how badass that looks. It looks so sick, guys. And it's going to be a great weapon for any magic wind users out there. All right, so you can obtain up to Matt exclusive Humus Rapier, 11 of them from the gold victory draw. So all from the gold. Um, obtain multiple to perform overboost, yada, yada, yada. The crash difficulty is a high difficulty stage added to both solo and co-op. Also, by clearing the crash battle, a frenzy battle may be added after a certain period of the event. So let's see how many times we have to clear it. Um, it doesn't actually say. The frenzy battle rewards become more luxurious as the number of players who clear the crash battle increase. Typically, this is 500. So 500 people in total need to clear either the solo or the crash. Both of them count towards it. Um, and you are limited on the amount of times that you can try per hour. All right. Other than that. Oh, here it is. All right, so clear count, 500 plus players. All players in the game are going to get 1,000 crystals. We will be running some crash uh, carries on our Discord. If you guys have not joined our Discord, come join the Curseborn Discord. We have a great thriving community of lots of awesome, helpful players, all different kinds of players, guys. And uh, I will be letting you guys know when we are going to do this. We'll either do like one or two days where we're running people. So if you just come and you hit up the channel at that point in time, we will get you run. We just need to figure out exactly what it's going to take to do that first. All right. So other than that, let's keep going up here. All right. So that was the Gallim Balor crash. Now we have the reawakened golden bomb rush on now. All right. So this is actually super cool because this... Honestly, I was getting really burnt out on leveling up characters before they dropped this event into the game. This has only happened once so far. This is the second time now, and I really hope they continue to do this. They say what happens twice happens thrice, so hopefully that's a good indicator that it is here to stay with the reawakened Golden Bomb Rush. Essentially, if you guys don't know, this is an, an, a way to get an enormous amount of experience very easily. So defeat golden bombs to gain a large amount of a character experience and get exchangeable items. Now let's see how long that this is going to last. All right, so let's see. In addition, by completing the one a day quest, you can gain experience to increase the level of three characters in the party from 70 to 75. Make sure to clear them every day. Um, so when is this event going to end? All right, so the event is going to last from May 22nd until June 9th. So close to three weeks, I think, maybe just about three weeks. Um, so there is going to be a one a day quest for this, guys. So I do think that it's important not to get all your characters max level before using all these one a day quests, um, because this one a day quest is going to give you a ton of experience just by itself. So if you really want to min max on your stamina potions, that's the way to do it. Uh, so just like keep that in mind guys. That's how I do it. All right So it does look like the boss information for the uh, Bot for the bomb rush event is going to be the spooky balloon recommended element wind and lightning for Those of you that don't know this boss will be basically put up a Block to certain elements. So it's good to bring multiple elements in your party I recommend making a party that has both of these elements in it so that when he's resistant to wind you can use lightning when he's resistant to lightning, you can use wind. Um, last time the bomb event was completely focused on sigils. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the case since there is literally no recommends of sigils for this fight. But it does look that it's nice that the recommended attacks are both physical and magic. So we can basically bring anything we want within those elements. All right. Defeat golden bombs and metal bombs by destroying a large amount of sigils. Okay, never mind. So it is still going to be breaking a ton of sigils. So just keep that in mind. You're going to want to be running characters that have... Uh, like certain sigil boosts on their weapons. It's really going to help a lot for clearing this quickly. Um, so like that says right here. And it does look like da, 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 da. this event will be unlocked by completing Genesis copies in the Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII story. All right, moving on to probably the most interesting thing of the night. It is the Colosseum of the Chosen. Now, this is three new towers, guys. On top of that, we're going to get a new campaign set of missions where we're going to be able to get a total uh, of 170 draw tickets, which is pretty damn awesome. 
now I'm like over 500, so I'm starting to get to the point where it's really I'm really hoping some of those older weapons get put out on the on the actual weapon pools now. All right, so it looks like we'll be able to acquire draw tickets times 50, various character exclusive weapon draw tickets times 10. That's actually really cool. During the login event period, we can get a total of 2,000 blue crystals. That's great, um, which is right here. And it looks like there is also a five-star weapon selected on the wish list will appear. So this is a special pick draw. Um, I'm guessing this is the wish list banner. We'll check this out here in a second. Now, for wish list banners are essentially none, all, all of the five-star weapons that drop while you're pulling on this banner will always be from your wish list. Now for new players, this is an excellent banner if you're trying to fill in old weapons that you need to level up your team. However, there is a live stream happening in a week. This does not happen very often in Ever Crisis, and I have been sensing now for a while that there is a crossover on the horizon. So I highly, highly, highly suggest that you guys wait to see what happens in that live stream before pulling on this banner. You definitely do not want to go for a wishlist banner and then be high and dry for a crossover event. Trust me, that is the way to get super heated at a game. So just heed my words and exercise some patience and I think that it will pay off in the long run. Besides, you can always wait. The banner's here for 10 days. You can wait and if nothing happens in the live stream, go ham on it, all right? All right, so other than that, Let's jump back over here. Now it does look like maybe there are two different banner draws here, right? So this is the, oh no, I think that was the exact same one. Coliseum of the Chosen special pick draw. All right, to celebrate the launch of the Coliseum of the Chosen, blah, 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 blah. Special pick draw is on now. In this draw, appearing five-star weapons will be the one that have been selected from the wish list. All right, the rate is still 7.5%. Now this is great. However, you could still spend 30k and not get a single five-star pull, right? So just keep that in mind, guys. It's it's meant to be super enticing. Normally, wishlist banners come right before something that's supposed to be really good. So it's meant to be a super bait, all right? So other than that, we are going to be able to get on stamp cards Mithril Ingots and Mithril Ore, so that's even more enticing. Plus, five-star weapons are guaranteed to appear at the 6th and 12th square on the page 1 and the fourth page, eighth and 12th scare on the page EX. Oh, that's a, okay. So fourth, eighth and 12th on the second page. All right, other than that, let's go. Ooh, so there are some packs right here. Man, it's, it's a big day, guys. All right, so I'm just gonna try and get through this without skipping anything. So let's jump over here. We'll look at the campaign missions. So clear B1 of the Amber Tower in the Coliseum of the Chosen. So B1 for all three towers. Clear one battle with every single character in the team in your party. All right, and then log in. So that's super easy. I love these campaign missions. Uh, super easy to fulfill. Just don't forget to do them. Now let's jump over to the shop. Let's see if there's anything worth picking up. All right, so right off the bat, $67.99. All right, so Legendary Coliseum launch pack. What is this? All right, so this is going to give 50 Astro Wind and 50 Mithra Ore. This is a major whale pack, guys. For the whales out there that can get this, congratulations. This is super cool. Your high wind's going to get super strong. But for any type of light spender or dolphin, I think that this is an easy skip. This is literally one OB level on one of your like 15 books that can all go to OB 10, right? For literally $70. So I know you get 10,800 paid, but in my opinion, that's a no. All right, let's look at the next one. This one's going to be another thing right here. It does give a bunch of weapon mats right there, but like I said, I never recommend paying for weapon materials in this game. There's always going to be a need for them, but they are gainable over time. And for me, I never really am at a loss of them. I'm never building weapons unless I come across something in the game that I actually need. And that has worked for me so far. Then we have a 300 paid five-star select gotcha ticket. Um, for me, I think like, for example, like right here is the 3k paid weapon voucher. These are great bundles for anyone spending. I highly recommend this after the season pass, but for me, I would rather, ha um, sit, wait on 10 of these right here and get one weapon voucher select ticket because you could get 10 weapons that you don't need. I mean, later on in the game, it just depends. If you're a newer player, 
These 300 paid tickets, they're fantastic. But later on, when you start to really need more specific things, you really need these weapon voucher tickets. Or if you can afford it, go for both, right? Okay, so here we have another premium launch 5K paid for the 20 tickets. I always dodge out on those. Um, and then it looks like we're getting to the more traditional standard stuff here. Two five-star tickets for 3,200 paid. And then it looks like we have Cloud and Barrett uh, paired on this one right here. We have Zach and Aerith. Then we have Yuffie and Tifa, Sephiroth and Red 13, and Matt and Glenn right here. So all good pairings or pretty decent pairings. But for me, I'm just going to have to pass on all of those for right now. And that is going to conclude my shop review going into that. Now let's jump over here. Let's make sure that there's just one special banner. There is. It is the five-star weapon select on the wish list will appear. I will not be pulling on this, guys. I am full-blown saving up for whatever is coming next week or whatever is coming in the week. In the weeks to come, there is something good coming. I know I've been saying that, but I am adamant in my belief upon that very thing. All right. So... That being said, um, I don't think I'm going to... We'll jump over here to this event. It does look like the crash is available. The reawakened golden bomb rush is right here. We're not going to check that out. Um, it does look like new battles and prizes have been added. The new weapon here is going to be the icon for the uh, co-op crash right there. There is going to be an EX3, which I will have a guide for soon enough. 300,000 power. So it, it's pretty damn powerful. This might be like one of the highest powers we've had in the game so far this is not even the crash guys this is the ex3 so a little bit scary right there but i will do my best to get you guys a guide as soon as i can now finally let's get into the freaking awesome stuff let's go to the battle towers and let's see what is new whoa this is awesome all right so we have the sealed tower of the cetra midgar falls floors 90 out of 90 complete now it does look like the towers are separated into groups of characters, which is definitely pretty fun. Now let's see how this is split up here. So here we have Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, Red 13. Okay, so really solid pair right there. Then we have Aerith, Yuffie, Kate, Sith, Zack. Also really solid pair right there. I feel like whoever got, whichever group got Kate, Sith, for most people, Kate, Sith is going to be that weak link. I think that basically only whales could have really gone hard on Kate, Sith unless you were a true Kate Sith fan and you were saving for him and you went for him right off the bat. I think most people don't really have him built, right? But he is being supported by Aerith, Yuffie, and Zack. I think this is going to be where Yuffie's Earth Arcanum really gets the chance to shine, guys. All right, now in the last group right here, the Emerald Tower, we're gonna have Sephiroth, Glenn, Matt, and Lucia. So two huge heavy hitters there. We have Matt and Sephiroth with either Lucia or Glenn to pick up the slack. In the second group, we have three heavy hitters, Aerith, Yuffie, and Zack right here. And then in the first group, I honestly think that we have four heavy hitters right here. So probably the Amber Tower will be the easiest, but obviously it just depends on what you have built for those characters. So I'm going to click into this right here. Let's check this out. Here is the Amber Tower. It's funny because all of these floors, they're towers, right? Except they go down down <laughs> we're not climbing up this is like b1 right so it's like basement floor basement one all right so it does look like the earliest floors are gonna be not super hard 126 129 132 so 3,000 increments all right then a 2,000 increment from b4 to v5 all right we are seeing these noble memories here guys all right and it doesn't look like uh it doesn't look like m multiple character memories oh no okay wow okay so lots of noble memories dropping and honestly not just for the characters that are participating which is freaking awesome so there's a ton of crystals here there's gonna it looks like to be a ton of mithril ore lots let's look at a weapon that isn't a boss uh floor and see what the rewards are okay so obviously less still crystals we got some gotcha tickets we got some gill much needed Applebot, we need a gold farming stage. It's absolutely essential at this point. I think it's pretty ridiculous that we don't have a way to farm gill whenever we need to. All right. Um, so yeah, this looks pretty fun. Let's go down. Let's look at the. Let's look at each of the different bosses. So this one's going to be an assault, an assault scorpion, hundred fifty thousand. That looks pretty simple. 
Then we have 175,000 bringing back the Inferno Lantern. Okay, so they're bringing back some of the old boss fights that are going to be super fun. Here we have a Zatant Rattel, 183,000. So nothing crazy strong. Here we have two bosses back to back right here. We have the Poison Dragon Floor 24. And then we have the uh, what looks like another Astral Iron Giant fight. 204,000 recommended. Okay, and then last but not least, Floor B30. It's a fight against Ifrit. That's actually super cool. It's a new fight against Ifrit. And it does look like we are going to get some pretty damn good rewards here. Five-star gotcha ticket, 10 mithril ingots, and 20. It looks like for the characters that are a part of the quest, they get 20 noble memories. But for all the other ones, they get 10. This should be 250,000 gold, not 25,000. Let's be real. But honestly, I am super excited about this. Hopefully, these battle effects take effect since I'm not sure if they did on the... Uh, last like 70 to 90 floors on the setra tower now okay so it is restricted right here that's how you can see who's restricted down there all right so other than that i think there will probably be a summon at the end of each one of the towers all right they probably have the same setup so if it was like what 200,000 all right so 246,000 this one is going to be shiva all right is there anything here this is the yuffie one is there anything here that needs earth that's the question um, and it doesn't really look like it, guys. Um, I don't think so. So I thought that this was going to be where they were really going to, like, lay into us using Yuffie. But it doesn't really look like that's the case, guys. Oh, here we go. All right, the Vajradara Lins. Here we go. Earth. So Yuffie is definitely going to have her moment right there if you did pull for her. Looks like this is the same boss as the uh, previous floor. So they are kind of similar here. And then the last one right here, we had Ifrit, we had Shiva. I'm guessing this is Ramu. All right, so let's go down to the bottom. And yes, it is Ramu. So uh, looks like, and no lightning users. I think we have Sephiroth, Lucia, right? We have Matt, and we have Glenn. None of them have a lightning weapon. So my guess is that sephiroth is getting a lightning arcanum with the next crossover whenever that is guys even though i don't think that you're going to even need it to kill ramu on this stage but honestly pretty excited these these are some pretty cool things i'm overall excited for this it does look like people are going to be blasting through these if the difficulty is any indication of the recommended power they shouldn't be too terribly hard but you never know guys honestly the recommended power is in my opinion up and down and a little bit all over the place so sometimes they're like spot on and sometimes they're way far off that being said i think that's going to bring a conclusion to the new week of final fantasy 7 ever crisis i'm curious what you guys think so definitely drop a comment in the comments below that being said if you guys enjoyed this video today don't forget to drop a like and to subscribe to the channel for future final fantasy 7 ever crisis content i'll see you guys in the next one hope you all have a wonderful night Take care and peace.